It's been requested for years now, and today we're finally gonna break the ice. We're going to be drawing a town map. Hi everybody, my name is Nate, and you are watching WASD20, a channel about tabletop RPGs and fantasy maps. Today's video is sponsored by World Anvil. World Anvil is an amazing tool for world builders, storytellers, game masters. It's a great way to keep all your world building or game master notes organized. And as we're on the topic of maps today, they also have some really great tools for tagging your maps with different locations, linking maps together, and all sorts of other good things. In fact, after I'm done with my town map today, I'm gonna be doing some of that, so make sure you stick around. So thanks to World Anvil for their ongoing support of my work. You can go check them out at worldanvil.com. So yes, at long last we are going to be drawing a town map here on WASD 20. But to be honest, one of the reasons it's taken me so long to do this is because I'm not really that experienced or confident in my skills in drawing town and city maps. I've done quite a few, but I have been really excited and eager for the help that I knew this book would provide for me. This is Fantasy Mapmaker, How to Draw RPG Cities for Gamers and Fans by Jared Blando. You guys might have seen his other book on my channel here and there. I'm a big fan of this one, used it for a couple years. I was really excited to get this one. Now, a quick few thoughts on this book before we get to drawing the map. I really like it. I do not regret getting it by any means. I'm very glad I own it. I have found it helpful, but I do have a little bit of critique. I wish that it was a little bit better organized. There's not really much of like a step-by-step -step process here. In fact, some of these things, like constructing a hamlet here, which is on page 108, seems like it should go closer to the beginning of the book. I don't know, there's just a few things that seem a little bit out of place here, and there's a whole lot of time spent on showing you individual buildings, and there are some really great descriptions of like, you know, grand temples and cloisters and harbors and aqueducts and things like that. And they talk about some of the things you might want to include, but I wish there was more on the town in general in terms of where does it make sense to put things? What are you likely to find near other things? And in a town of such and such a size, what sorts of structures might we expect? There's a little bit of that in here for sure, but I just wish there were a bit more of that. And I can say the same thing for how to draw fantasy art and RPG maps. I wish there was a bit more in terms of what would be realistic placement of some of these things. So overall, I do recommend it. I'm gonna be using it today, but I do feel like personally, I have more research to do on this stuff. This book is not giving me everything I need, but we are going to jump into the process anyway. We're gonna be drawing a town map. This is a helpful starting place here on page 16. Sketch a planning line, place the town square, add roads, add rivers, lay out building blocks, and add forests. So that is where we're gonna be starting. So let's get down to the paper. All right, first thing we're gonna do is draw that planning line. So here's my planning line, and then we'll go ahead and put a square somewhere in the middle. This will be our town square. Next up, we are going to add roads, and this is one of those things that I wish the book commented on a bit more. What sorts of road structures make sense for a town or city? And uh, that sort of thing would be really helpful. Now, I have looked at a lot of medieval town maps and things like that in my life as a game master and map maker, uh, and so that can be really helpful too, going and looking at actual maps. So just go, try it. Go search medieval town maps and see what you find. Now, I actually don't have that many roads here. I'm trying to keep my settlement really small. It's going to be almost more of a village, really. And um, after that, we're going to be placing a river. That's the next step in the book, so we're going to go ahead and do it. Obviously, not all settlements are going to be near a river, but it does uh, make sense that a settlement would want a good source of fresh water. And so a river is a great thing to add. With the river placed, the next step is to block in buildings, structures. So I'm just going to be drawing in some shapes here, kind of looking at the book and looking for some good shapes, making a kind of a mixture of rectangles and squares and L-shaped buildings of various sizes and a few other varieties as well. To me, it makes sense to have quite a few structures along your roads and to generally have them a little more dense around your town square and then getting less dense as they spread out from there. For a more heavily populated city or town, especially one with walls, you might find that it's jam-packed all the way through pretty evenly. 
I probably would have done this whole thing in pencil first, but uh, I know it is a bit hard to see, so don't worry, ink is coming soon. I'm also going to be penciling in a well in the middle of the town square. That's a thing that makes sense to have there, just a little circle for now, we'll add more detail later. After most of the buildings are done here, we are going to pencil in a little bit of vegetation, some trees and bushes, a few scattered throughout the town, and then some forests on the outskirts here. For now, I'm just plotting in kind of the general locations here, and uh, I'll get a little more detailed and refined when I do the ink work. Because this is not a huge city center, I definitely want to have a fair amount of trees and forests nearby, but I also do want to save some room for agriculture, so I'm not covering all this open space quite yet. We need some fields. Alright, now that the ink work is beginning, I can actually turn up the exposure a little bit without totally washing out my pencil lines here. So, uh, for this I am first off tracing the roads and I'm doing this in kind of a dashed fashion. Uh, I'm not making real distinct roads. I want maybe a little bit of almost waviness to them as well uh, because this is a smaller village. These are dirt roads. Uh, if I were doing like paved roads or cobblestone then I would probably make a more dark crisp edge to my roads but because they're dirt roads I don't see that as uh, very natural. The pen that I'm using here today is an Arteza Inconic 0.4, and uh, it's okay. They sent me a whole bunch of these, and I told them I would put a link in the video description, but I don't know if I necessarily recommend them because it's got three flat edges on the grip, which I don't really like. I'd rather have a round grip, and also they only come in one size. I would really rather buy a pack that has multiple sizes. All right, next I outline the river, and then I get to work outlining the buildings, and uh, I'll pretty much uh, skip through most of this here. Now it's a good idea to start thinking about one building probably near the town square or a central location that could be like the inn or tavern or something like that and to start kind of thinking about what some of these other places could be. As we finish up the buildings here I'll be starting to outline some trees and of course the forests uh, which are going to be a pretty time consuming step in this process. With some of those basics outlined, I decided it was time to add some ink to the areas I'd blocked in for fields. Uh, this is an important part of a village like this. They need a source of food, so it's definitely something to consider. So I decided to do some fields in this kind of simple row style. And uh, then I also decided to add some pastures, so some fenced in areas where sheep or goats or whatever can graze safely. So at this point I started looking through the book for buildings I could add and uh, starting to think about the roof lines. So you can see me working on one here, just kind of drawing some lines on the roof. I make these little gables by uh, making little triangular shapes. And uh, this one here I actually got an idea from the book for a water mill. Makes sense right on the river. Um, so it's got one of those big wheels that can be used to, uh, you know, power the mill. All right, I'm starting to add the basic roof line to a lot of the other buildings now, and uh, it's a good idea to, you know, look at some of the shapes that I'm doing or look at other RPG town maps or uh, a book like the one I have, and uh, just get some inspiration for different roof styles and building styles and things like that. There are so many ideas for different kinds of buildings in the book. I tended to just stick to some of the basics. I'm not getting real fancy and trying to identify right now that, oh, this is a blacksmith and it's going to look like this. And this one right here is going to be an alchemist's shop and all of that stuff. I'm just sticking to basics, really. While we could leave our roofs there, it's absolutely a lot of fun to go in and add more texture and get to some different roofing styles and things like that. So this part, I'm just going in with a, a much thinner pen now and adding a lot more detail. I'm also adding some chimneys because I forgot to do that uh, when I was, doing, I was doing the roof lines. And those are a very important feature. Probably going to have a lot of chimneys. The only buildings that wouldn't have chimneys would be like, you know, maybe a stable or a shed or a barn or something like that. Um, and a lot of these buildings realistically might have five or six chimneys. I'm not doing any more than two. I'm just trying to keep things a little bit simpler here. Uh, especially with the scale that I'm drawing at. All 
Here I decided to extend a uh, road a little bit, kind of make a path out to the river, maybe a little boat launch, a place where people can push their rafts into the river. You can see me adding a bit of texture here to my dirt roads in the square, and uh, also just a few rocks and, and little other details to try to make it come alive a bit more. Next up, we need a bridge over our river. So I'm making a pretty simple stone bridge here, uh, giving the impressions of cobblestones going across to vary it a bit from my dirt road. All right, next up, we're gonna add some detail to our river here. I'm doing a river bank, and then I'm gonna be going in and just kind of making some wavy effects to give the impression of water. And of course, we just have to add some little grassy texture lines here and there. And now the part I've been dreading for most of my adult life, uh, the trees, the forests. Um, this method is from the book by Jared Blando, and uh, I really liked the way it looked, so I decided to give it a shot. I'm not quite as good at it as he is, but I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. It is, however, very time consuming. So, you know, just be prepared for that. And after that, I went ahead, after the forests were done, I went ahead and drew a box for my title here. Uh, now, I was thinking about doing a border as well, but I realized I kind of went too far to the edge of my page, and um, that's probably okay anyway. I don't often do borders on town and city maps. So for this one, I'm naming it Marcel, which is actually a village that is on my map of Azora from the How to Draw a Fantasy Map series. I went ahead and added a few more little nitpicky details, some shading here or there, some little rocks and pebbles and things, but for the most part, we're done with the drawing. Now you might wonder, what about a key for this map? And for that, we are going to World Anvil. All right, so here I am at worldanvil.com. So you could absolutely make a key for your map, but I'm actually gonna be in World Anvil making pins and labels for my map. So if I click on maps on the left side here, I can see my maps that I have so far. I'm going to edit my Marcel map, which is the town map I uploaded. If you do not have it yet, you would just be clicking on Create Map, and then you could upload it through there. But I've already uploaded it, so now I'm going to edit. And you could add pins and mess with them in this view right here. But I'm actually going to go to Presentation Mode. And whenever I want a pin, I just right-click. And then it comes up with this menu here, and I can title it what I want to. So this is going to be my inn, I decided. And this is going to be the Flying Squirrel Inn. I can add a description if I want. Um, I can select which kind of marker I would like. So I'm going to be going through my map here and making a bunch of these. And I'll see you on the other side. All right, here we are. You can see I've added several pins here and uh, given little descriptions to these places. A shop, and the mayor's residence, a blacksmith, the mill and are in. And then I also have these green quest markers here. And these are just little kind of story hooks uh, and things that could lead to larger quests. I forgot to mention that you can also link these pins to one of your articles about your world or about this place. You could even make like a menu for your inn or something like that. Or you can link to another map like a floor plan or something like that. That's actually what I did on my world map here. You can see I've got quite a few pins here and with this pin right here, I actually linked it to my map of Marcel. So if we click on it now, it will take us to Marcel. Pretty cool. So in terms of labeling places on your town map, you can absolutely go nuts and label every single building. But personally, I like to leave a little bit of flexibility, a little bit of blank space, some room for myself to improvise based on what my players want to do when they're in town. 
All right, that is going to do it for this one, everybody. I want to thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed the video, I would love it if you would leave it a like. Uh, make sure you're subscribed so you can see more. And I also welcome your suggestions in terms of what you'd like to see in the future for town and city maps. I'm thinking about maybe a breakdown of several different roof styles or things like that. Let me know. I welcome your ideas. Of course, I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons for their support of my work. Patrons are people who give to the channel on a monthly basis, and they can get some pretty cool rewards like weekly live map drawing streams with me, among many other things. So go check it all out over at patreon.com WASD20. Take care, everybody. You'll see me again very soon.